Moving on to number 47, a radar range to a small charted object, such as a light, will provide a line of position in which form? Straight line, parabola, hyperbola, or arc? Well, what they're getting at here is if you were on a chart and you had some object out here, like a light or even a buoy, you're not really supposed to navigate by buoys, but if you have a light and you were to use some dividers on it and uh, you shot a radar range to it using your radar range, the energy would go from your ship to the light and then back, and you would be able to plot that as an arc on your chart. So you know you're somewhere along that line of position and it plots as an arc. So it would not be a straight line. Um, it wouldn't be a parabola or a hyperbola. Uh, definitely it would be an arc in this case. Straight lines of position are given by visual bearings. Um, parabolas and hyperbolas Hyperbolas have to do with Loran, like hyperbolic, hyperbolic nav navigation. Parabola, I can't think of an example in which you would have um, that from a, a radar or anything. But So choice D is correct there, Arc. Number 48, if you are required to enter a lock on your voyage, information on the lock regulations, signals, and radio communications can be found where? Well, your mind for locks might go to the the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, they're a lot of the ones that are responsible for maintaining it, but information regarding the regulations and communications for them would be found in the Coast Pilot. Bowditch is more of a, a navigational reference book. Um, the Corps of Engineers Information Bulletin is not actually a publication by the Corps of Engineers. They put out some publications, but uh, on the screen you can see the ones that are listed. And then the publication Keys to the Locks is uh, not in existence. Whoever was writing the question was just having some fun there. Number 49, which top mark shown in the illustration identifies an isolated danger? Top marks are things that go on top of buoys um, to help you have a shape to go along with the color and the numbers and everything. And so if we take a look at the exam, the um, illustration in the exam, uh, a, B, C, and D are our choices. Well, A goes with a safe water buoy. The single sphere uh, correlates to the red and white sea buoy, the safe water buoy. Charlie and Delta both correspond to cardinal marks, which have no lateral significance. They are um, marks that show direction to safe water. And then that leaves us with choice B. And looking in the light list, you can see that um, the double spherical top mark goes with the isolated danger buoys. So a choice would B would be the correct one here. And then our final question, what is the approximate geographic range of Horton Point Light, New York? If your height of I is 40 feet, um, refer to the reprints of lights and coast pilots. Given the choices here, um, we have to be pretty precise. And our strategy for this is going to be finding how tall Horton Point Light is, and then finding how tall we are, and combining the distance to horizon for both of them, the geographic range. So the light list, the geographic range table is going to be what we want to use there. So in this case, the way to solve the problem is to kind of set yourself up with um, your information and the light, Horton Point light, right? And so the problem says that you are 40 feet above sea level. And you need to find out how far above sea level the light is. Well, the first thing to do is look up in the back of the light list, its light list number, which turns out to be light list number 21150, and then go find out how tall the light is. And so looking in the light list, we can see that the light is 103 feet tall. So given that, our next step is to go to the geographic range table in the light list. And for 40 feet, we pull out a value of 7.4 nautical miles. And then for the light of 103 feet, it's not listed. So the value for 100 feet is 11.7. .7. The value for 110 feet is 12.3. If you chose the 11.3 or the 11.7 value, um, you wouldn't necessarily get the correct answer. So you have to kind of mentally interpolate it. And if we're at 103 feet, we are 30% of the way from 11.7 to 12.3, so closer to um, 11.9 nautical miles there. So you see that is our interpolation that we did to make it match better with 103 feet. 
So you can see in the choices, they are actually pretty close together. So we need to make sure we do this right. So with the 11.9 and the 7.4, I feel like we've interpolated that correctly. And the um, final answer would come to 19.3 nautical miles as our final answer. So looking at the choices, we come out uh, choice B, 19.3 nautical miles. Well, that concludes the uh, sample exam for the Master Near Coastal Less Than 100 Q162 provided by the National Maritime Center. In the video series, we've gone through and solved every problem. Uh, for study strategies, I would say getting your hands on a copy of the light list um, and Bowditch are particularly useful in this case. And just start working practice problems until you feel like you can score above a 70%, uh, preferably above a 85%, just to give yourself some safety. But um, working through these problems and a bunch on your own should get you uh, to success on the, the um, navigation general exam. Thanks for watching. Happy navigating. Thank <laughs> you.